welcome to the afternoon presentation to the to my talk. Um, well, you have seen this morning um, some applications, uh, lightning effect simulation with uh, a 3D um, simulation tool with um, time uh, domain software. What I would like to focus on now is uh, more the the direct link to our cabling tool, uh, Cable Studio, and what you're able to do uh, in Cable Studio, what kind of cables you can define, in which way the uh, interaction, the susceptibility from external fields into the cable harness and also the emission from the cable uh, to the uh, external um, space, how this works and how you can do this. Okay, so um, I will talk about Cable Studio. I will do some demo presentations. Some of the um, models are already prepared because the simulation would take about 15 to 20 minutes, not too long for um, the kind of structure what we see here. Um, but anyway, so I will uh, have to open one and uh, or the other project in between. So uh, this is the example what I would like to show you. It's a small uh, kind of aircraft with a cable harness inside. Um, we have got um, different volumes with different materials. Uh, there are also a bulkhead uh, in order to separate different um, parts of the um, aircraft inside. Okay, when talking about the cable simulation, we face quite a lot of challenges. And I think the uh, biggest challenge actually is that uh, we have to deal with quite a lot of um, cables. Uh, when we talk about an Airbus 380, for example, we have more than 500 kilometer of cables in an aircraft. This means that would be from Munich uh, to Trier, uh, for all of you who are more familiar with uh, the German map. And um, that's quite a long trip. So by car, you would take five to six hours to, um, to do this. So, and if we look inside, I'm happy that I found um, this picture here. We can see um, how the aircraft looks inside. So it's actually it's quite a mess, so, um, quite a lot of cables, different cable types. And uh, the answer, uh, the question is, well, how can we uh, manage to simulate um, such a system? And the key uh, to this is that we have to apply hybrid solutions. So if you try to model everything with a 3D simulation tool, you would uh, definitely fail because of the memory and also because of the time uh, you need. Okay, so um, what can we do? Um, what I would like to demonstrate now is the seven steps what you have to take in order to get to a combined 3D and cable simulation. Uh, the first thing what I will talk about is uh, in which way you are able to define the geometry or how to import the CAD files. I will not show this because uh, I think this uh, is uh, quite uh, well known uh, in uh, Microwave Studio, uh, but I will quickly explain this. Then how we are able to define a curve or import cable data and in which way we can use such information in order to create a more complex cable structure inside of an enclosure. Finally, we have to define excitation. Uh, for example, lightning strike. In my example, I will use the plane wave excitation. Um, but the, in principle, everything is quite the same. And uh, as with a different um, time um, domain um, excitation or source. And what I would like to show you is how to create the cable bundle, how to model this. And finally, how to terminate the cables because this has quite a big effect on the simulation result. Okay, so let's start with the import of a CAD file. So what we usually use is um, we use uh, the uh, already existing filters, the import filters of Microwave Studio. In this case, we use um, a SAT file. We import this into Microwave Studio prepared the geometry for the cable simulation and, um, well, uh, did the next step. The next step, and this is what I will immediately show then uh, with Microwave Studio is, we uh, created a curve 
what you usually also use uh, when you want to create more complex uh, volumes or um, objects uh, in there. And with such a curve, you have the possibility to create the cable path in 3D. Okay. So that's what I would like to show you. So here we have the imported model. If I zoom in a little bit and click on the curve here, then you can see in blue we have the already defined curve. Have the possibility to quickly check what kind of uh, curve it is. So if I go to the edit dialog, then you can see it's uh, a spline. It has um, certain nodes um, that define um, here the, um, the the nodes of uh, or the shape. And now I use the very simple functionality that's called um, your know, root from curve. When I press this button, then uh, I have the possibility to select the curve. Then I can define any uh, root, so I call it the cable path. Just to give it a, a specific name, because you could have more than one curve or one, than one root in such an object and then you can distinguish between them. And once I press OK, then, um, well, a route will be created for, uh, for the cable simulation. I'm still working with the 32010, so maybe this morning you have already seen uh, the 32011. In 2010, we have uh, still two tabs here for the 3D and what I will do now um, for the 2D, 2.5D cabling world. And here in this, so you can now see that we have here in, at this line, we have already uh, the curve for uh, the cable lane. So I will quickly change uh, the view so that we see uh, transparency and that we can uh, look inside of, the, of this aircraft. And you see here, these are the nodes and the segments um, that define the cable path inside of the enclosure. Okay, so now we need cables. You can import cables from the library, provided that such a library already exists. You can define such a library uh, yourself, or we use standard cables, like signal wires, twisted cables, ribbon cables, and so on. What I would like to demonstrate is in which way you can define um, a specific cable. I would like to define a twisted cable with four wires with the shields around, and um, that's um, easily done. First thing what I do is I start with a single wire. I define a circular shape and also include the insulator. I wrap an insulator around the material is the PE, the, the material of the conductor is the copper, and um, so the inner um, diameter is one millimeter, and the thickness of the insulator uh, shall be uh, only 100 microns. So I press OK, then I can see the cross-section of this. I can still change the name, and uh, I just call it SW for single wire, and apply this to my project. So you see that there are already some other wires existing in the project. These are default wires, so you could also use them. You can change them, but it's quite easy to define um, a single wire yourself. Okay, now I take the single wire and create a twisted cable. Then I go to new twisted cable. I select here the single wire with the specific um, parameters. I go up to the number of four, and I can define a, a right or left turn for this uh, twisted cable. You can define how many twists per meter you would like to have, or you just define the lay so um, how long is one circle, um, um, one uh, rotation um, in millimeters. Again, if I press OK, then we can immediately see uh, the twisted cable, and the circle around indicates that this is a twisted cable, not just a bundle of four straight wires, but uh, that it's uh, twisted around its center. Okay, again, I give it a different name. I call this uh, the twisted cable TC to make it short. And that's it. 
The next and final step is I would like to define a screen around this twisted cable. Um, since um, these wires here, so um, yeah, the single wires, the twisted cables, ribbon cables, and coaxial cables are just generic cables, I have to use uh, the cable group definition. And that's what I do now. I go to new cable group. The dialog looks like this one here. So the first thing what I do, I define a name. I call this the shielded twisted cable, a longer name. And then I decide what kind of cables or wires I would like to add to this group. So if I go here to add, I can go to my add twist cable. I take this one here, get um, my cable, what I've just defined with the name TC, press OK, and add this to the cable group. You can see that there is the content. We have an insulator inside. I define a, a thickness of uh, one millimeter, so I wrap this. No, I, I take a circle. Um, so I, I put this around the inner conductor, um, the inner wires with a diameter of, uh, let's say, four millimeters. And now I can also add a screen to this. I press new screen. So I would like to wrap this screen around the inner insulator with a specific thickness. And I can define if I would like to have a solid shield or a braided shield. I, I take the braided shield, uh, use a specific formula for the transfer impedance uh, of the braided shield because it's not a perfect shield. It's uh, has um, some, um, well, the field can still penetrate through this. I put it into the right position, so between the inner and outer insulator. And finally, for the outer insulator, I also define a thickness of the wrap of uh, 100 microns. Okay, I press OK, and we can here see the result. It's the twisted cable inside with a certain distance to the shield and um, an insulator outside. In such a way, you can define any kind of cable what you would like to do. As an example, I would like uh, to show you um, this slide here. So if we go to this uh, light, we can or you can define any kind of uh, single wire what you would like to define. It can uh, be of rectangular shape, uh, you can have an ellipse, uh, also any polygons and uh, so on, then you can use such um, cables or wires in order to define twisted cables. You can also define uh, ribbon cables of any arbitrary shape. You can define different kinds of uh, shielded cables, and here you can see that's what I've just defined um, online. But again, you can use such a small group and create an even more complex group. <coughs> you can hierarchically um, create cable structures of any content, what you would like to do. And of course, and that's um, the last step, you can create any random bundles inside Cable Studio. You just take um, a list of single wires or cable groups or whatsoever, put this together, you can define a surrounding screen or insulator, you can um, put this together and in this way you're able to create any kind of cable structure. So if we go back to this example here, once I've defined um, the cable, then I can go to the laying. This means I press a button laying cable. I select the route into which I would like to define the cable. So it's already selected here. In the middle, I see all available cables. In the cable group, I take the one what I've just defined. And cable laying is done quite easily by just pressing one single button, add cable, add to cable route. And now I have put this cable into the route called cable car. I still can change the name of this um, cable in, in order to make this uh, um, more easy um, to identify in Design Studio in the simulator. So press apply. Then actually the cable is here inside of this uh, cross section. I double click on this 
would show the contents of the cable in the segment here. And if I had put more cables inside, you would see um, a bigger um, list here below in the cross-section view. Okay. Let's go back to the slides. And because I, that's what I just showed, how to create the cable bundle. What we need for uh, susceptibility analysis, we need also an excitation. That's uh, what I can do here uh, again in the 3D view of um, Cable Studio. In this case, I have defined a plane wave that, um, that excites the structure from uh, this side here. And, well, I can use the information and can start this is what I would like to show here. We can start an, uh, a calculation, a field distribution calculation in Microwave Studio. And take the information then for the cable um, structure analysis. Just to give you a short overview about the results here. And if we look at the plane wave excitation, I excite it from this side here. And the typical results would be, for example, the, the surface current. Well, if we can see this much better. In, in frequency range, um, then you can see how the electromagnetic field um, induces the current on the surface. And of course, uh, the current can be also seen then um, or has an influence on the cable that is here inside. So we have here a small hole, and we can look here inside. These nodes here represent the cable path, we can also see the connection to ground here that is automatically created um, by Cable Studio. So whenever you have um, a cable and terminate this to ground, then we find the next closest um, point where to connect the cable to the surrounding ground plane. Okay, so then the next step is how do we get a simulation model for the cables. I explained in the beginning that it's impossible that you run everything with the 3D field solver, so we need uh, a different method. And the method what we use is called the transmission line uh, theory. Uh, please don't distinguish with this uh, with the transmission line matrix method. Yeah, it's the transmission line theory uh, which is applied. And what we do, we cut the cable along its length into small segments, and for each individual segment, we create um, well characteristic cross section. What you can see here in the middle of the plane, we have a cut. You can see part of the enclosure, and you can see also the cable hovering here in the middle of the um, of the plane. And of course, we can see the same effect also when looking in our example. I look at um, where we have created our cross sections. I can go here into the meshing tab. I view the cross section, make a double click, and then can see the different cross sections appearing here. So we see here it's more or less a straight line, but uh, at uh, different positions we get different cross sections depending on where the cable is. So here, for example, we are somewhere in the middle of the across. With this hybrid method, we have the advantage that we can quite easily calculate uh, the effects in the cable with all the crosstalk and um, also in, investigate uh, different termination and uh, load effects. But at the same time, we can exchange data with um, the 3D solver, and that's what we do here in the last step in Design Studio in the Network Simulator. So what we have got here in the middle is, sorry for all these long names, but these are the probe names. In the middle, we have a block, and this block represents 
the cable structure. If I make a right mouse click and go to the properties, then I can see here I have the possibility in the release 2010 to decide either for the irradiation or for the radiation. In 2011, there is just an exchange, a real true code simulation. This means we have an, um, a direct exchange between field calculation and um, um, transmission line um, calculation so that you do not have to decide for the one or the other case. But here it was only possible to calculate the irradiation or the radiation. Okay, how is this done? If you, the first thing what we have to do is, and that's why I opened my third model, it's already prepared. What you have to do is, you have to um, terminate the, um, the wire in a way as you would usually um, create your cable harness. So usually you have, for example, a 50 ohm resistor or uh, you have the direct connection to uh, ground, to the ground structure. And uh, well, I'm lost because I, I feel that um, the GUI has frozen, so I have to probably open uh, another one. And uh, in this, okay, yes, I opened another one. We are all flexible, no problem. So this one go again and put it into there. In general, everything is prepared. What we have got, we have the uh, exciting fields um, in um, the um, surrounding the, um, the aircraft. We have the cable model, so we have created cross sections We have created the spice equivalent circuit that is represented by this box. In this case, I have defined um, uh, that um, the simulator should use the irradiation data. And if you look um, here uh, quite closely, you can see that there is no source defined. So it's a passive cable structure. We have only termination resistors to ground. And I can run different uh, simulations with, uh, for example, different terminations for the shield. Because this has uh, quite a big effect on the simulation result. So if we directly compare, um, the simulation, by the way, here would take about um, 10 to 15 seconds. Um, when I um, compare a one ohm shield, uh, sorry, a one ohm termination for the shield, then I can see here um, a certain spectrum um, of the induced voltages in the wire. And if I directly compare this with the a 50 ohm resistance, then you can see that 50 ohm, the shield is not as good because uh, we have more or less uh, a floating conductor, or, well, it's not perfectly grounded on both sides. And so just a small change in the um, termination resistance has a big effect in the induced voltages on the shield, of course, and also inside of the cable structure. That's what I did here, and you can see this a little bit more in a clear way. So with the model inside, and I've only changed these two um, termination resistances, and that caused completely different results. Not completely because the spectrum, the resonances are still at the same frequencies, but of course, uh, with a one ohm termination, I have much better shielding effect when uh, with the 50 ohm resistor. Okay, what we have done was now chart the, um, investigating the irradiation, but of course also the other way is possible. So just imagine you have a cable and uh, you have a specific uh, source, um, um, a current or voltage source, you have impressed current in the cable structure, then we are also able to calculate the emission from the cable in the same way. Again, we have, um, well, quite the, um, a good uh, algorithm because you can again separate the extremely tiny structures of the cable structure inside of more complex 3D environments and uh, by means of the combination 
uh, you can drastically reduce the, the required uh, simulation time. So that's the current insight of the uh, of the aircraft. Um, well, created by uh, the induced current in the cable. And this is what you can see, the field distribution to the outside. And as you expected, we have uh, the electromagnetic field inside is much higher than outside due to the shielding effect of the uh, enclosure of the aircraft. So what can we do with really complex cable structures? Uh, we have already seen that we are able to define um, some um, cables and so on, if we go to a real system, then um, the, the message what I would like to um, give you is that we are able to import more complicated cable structures. We can even handle cable bundles like this one here below. And so of course, you wouldn't define all these cable routes um, and paths by hand. Usually would use one of the already existing import filters. And uh, so we provide um, different possibilities how to import this into um, Cable Studio. What I would like to give you with a small uh, last example is an outlook uh, to 2011, but uh, my colleague Leo has already introduced 2011 this morning, so here only with the slide. Um, it's, um, everything is now tightly integrated into one grid. There is no second tap here anymore, so Everything what you would like to do regarding cable simulation can be done here uh, with the front end. You can see on the left side, that's the navigation tree of um, the 3D model of Microwave Studio. And here, this is uh, the required input data for the cable simulation. And everything else behaves exactly in the same way. Um, another advantage is that you have the possibility to choose between different solvers. Uh, also, um, formerly uh, microstripes with the TLM solver is now directly integrated into 2011. So very convenient to work with the new uh, suite. And regarding the braided shields, um, since braided shields are very, very uh, important in aerospace, but sometimes also in uh, automotive industry, we have improved the functionality here because uh, many customers ask us in which way uh, would be possible to import measurement data for the transfer impedance of the shield. So this will be possible. We can also um, see directly the effect, uh, the transfer impedance over the frequency, so that you get an idea up, uh, uh, up to which frequency you have a good uh, braided shield behavior or shielding effect. And when, um, well, is, um, um, the, uh, when is the maximum uh, frequency reached uh, when the braided shield doesn't work very well. And um, that's just an outlook, but I think that's quite important for the future for um, cable simulation with external flow. So thank you very much. For your Questions? Thank you. 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 Thank you.